Hello, I'm Dr. Alan Fires, and I'd like to present the results of our paper on the prevalence of chronic pain in the United Kingdom. Chronic pain is a significant public health problem the world over. It has been linked with impairments in memory, cognition, sleep and sexual function. People with chronic pain report higher levels of poverty, anxiety, depression and even suicidal ideation. Chronic lower back pain has recently been highlighted as one of the most prominent causes of disability worldwide by the Global Burden of Disease Reviews. In recognition of the widespread impact chronic pain has at an individual and societal level, national governments are increasingly prioritising chronic pain as a major public health challenge through the production of national strategies and the convening of pain summits in countries including the United Kingdom, United States and Australia. These initiatives have emphasised the importance of accurate population-based estimates of chronic pain in helping to drive and inform policies of prevention and care, as has happened for other long-term conditions such as cancer and cardiovascular disease. Despite several high-profile national reports highlighting the significance of chronic pain, there is little consensus regarding the burden of pain in the United Kingdom. The purpose of our review was to synthesise existing data on the prevalence of various chronic pain phenotypes in order to produce much needed, accurate and contemporary national estimates for the United Kingdom. So how did we do this? We performed a search of major electronic databases for articles published after 1990, reporting prevalence estimates of various chronic pain phenotypes in order to shortlist papers that were as homogenous as possible, we only accepted studies reporting estimates for pain that were clearly defined as chronic, i.e. a minimum of three months or more, and meeting predefined criteria we felt were necessary to be representative of the general population. In addition to a descriptive summary of the results, meta-analysis was used to generate pooled prevalence estimates for chronic pain and for chronic widespread pain. From the 1,737 articles generated through our searches, 19 studies matched our inclusion criteria, presenting data from just under 140,000 adult residents of the United Kingdom. Based on pooling of the best quality studies of the general population samples, the estimated prevalence of chronic pain in the United Kingdom is 43%, equating to just over 28 million people. We can also see that despite our fairly stringent selection criteria, statistical heterogeneity remained high. Stratifying the studies by calendar year of survey suggests that this is one of the potential sources of systematic variation, with prevalence increasing with time. Grouping studies by location of study population suggests that this is another potential source, but firm conclusions in this regard are limited by the few studies available in which to make robust comparisons and the marked heterogeneity within the groups. Looking closer at the studies that presented outcomes by the age group of survey participants, chronic pain prevalence appears to rise steadily in line with increasing age, affecting up to 62% of the population over the age of 75. This may suggest that the burden of chronic pain could increase further still in line with an ageing population. It is also worth noting that the prevalence of chronic pain in even the youngest age groups may be as high as 30%. Four studies used a questionnaire to identify participants who were experiencing moderate to severely disabling chronic pain. Estimates ranged from 10 to 14% of the UK population. Reported prevalence estimates were summarised for chronic widespread pain, giving a pooled estimate of 14%. We also found that chronic neuropathic pain affects 8 to 9% of the general population and fibromyalgia 5%. Fewer than half of the 19 included studies were primarily designed to produce prevalence data and this was reflected in the variability of reporting of important demographics. Population denominators and response rates were not always identifiable, in particular where the survey measured multiple outcomes. Participant demographics were not always displayed and there were occasional numerical discrepancies between the data presented in the study abstract, main text and result tables. Limitations aside, our study indicates how a systematic review of published surveys carried out in one country 
with the exclusion of studies at high risk of bias, can provide population prevalence estimates for different pain conditions of the sort required by national policy strategies for the prevention and care of chronic pain.